This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, he is a 65-year-old gentleman who has pseudo exfoliation and a non-dilating pupil. This is the maximum pharmacological midriasis which could be achieved in this patient. The cataract is not dense. The managing the nucleus might not be an issue here. Uh, but I'm going to use stretch pupilloplast in this patient to deal with the pupil expansion and let's see how things turn out. After making the side ports, I'm using the intracameral dilating and anesthetic agent hoping that the pupil would dilate more but unfortunately it doesn't. If the pupil is rigid and then it's unlikely that your intracameral dilating agent is going to help it in much way. After staining of the anti-capsule, dispersive OVD goes in first followed by cohesive OVD underneath it. And now I'm going to perform a stretch pupilloplasty. So this is a rigid pupil and uh, I'm consciously going to try to create some micro sphincterotomies by stretching the pupil to ensure that the pupil remains in an expanded position until the end of the surgery. So I'm using Y hooks to do the same. Typically I do this expansion in four meridians. Once it is done, time to do the rexis. As I'm puncturing the anti-capsule, I can see this folds in the anti-capsule suggesting mild zonular weakness but as I begin tearing the capsule I'm relieved that the zonular health seems to be alright. A 5 mm round rexus is created performing hydrodissection and uh, ensuring that the, the lens matter is totally free from the capsule. Time to emulsify the nucleus. The superficial cortex is aspirated. I'm going to perform a direct vertical chop. The first setting which I'm going to change here is the power setting. So I'm going to reduce the phaco power. I'm going to use just 15% power in longitudinal mode to bury my phaco tip into the substance nucleus and then create a chop. The nucleus is around grade 2 or even lesser than that. So chopping is not going to be very difficult at all. We don't have to bury the tip deep in. Just by hold it a little bit and we can immediately score and divide it quite easily. Once the first hemineucleus is divided, I am going to change the settings to quadrant removal mode and I am going to remove these fragments out of the bag and emulsify them. Subsequently, the second hemineucleus is divided into smaller fragments and all the fragments are then emulsified. Time to aspirate the cortex. The pupil is retracted using the irrigation handpiece to get better visualization and to ensure that I'm catching the cortex, not the anti capsule. Some part of the cortex is sticking onto the posterior capsule quite strongly so I'm again going back with my BSS scanla to irrigate out the cortical fibers which is sticking onto the posterior capsule. The last bit of cortex is now aspirated out. So bimanual irrigation aspiration definitely helps us because the irrigation handpiece can be used to retract the iris and to ensure that we are holding the cortex when you're doing aspiration. It improves the safety a little bit. I'm using cohesive OVD to form the capsular bag. A multi-piece lens is then implanted into the bag and the proximal haptic is then maneuvered into the capsular bag. Time to remove the OVD. The cohesive OVD both in front and behind the lens is aspirated out. The side port and the main incision is hydrated, that's the case is done. And these are the first day post-op pictures. During stretch pupilloplasty and if we tear the sphincter, you know, you can have this irregular pupil in dark brown Indian iris. It may not have any cosmetic significance, but uh, if you don't want to have a sphincter tear, then it's important that we don't stretch it under the limbus. 
to have a spring to tear. But in this case, it was planned because it's a rigid pupil. So I wanted a wider exposure and intentionally it was stretched wide to ensure that I had some amount of a spring to tear. But in cases where you don't require very maximal dilation, even moderate amount of stretching can do the job and this can also retain the regularity of the pupil and cosmetically it may look better. That's it. Thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.